Now that I've had all my DIY BMS cell modules built and I've been able to program them, I now need to build and program the central controller. Uh, now I've had five of these boards made, which is the minimum, and I only really needed one extra because I already had this one here, which Stuart kindly sent me some time ago. Uh, now I'm going to build two of these because down the line I may upgrade the DIY BMS version 3 I'm using on my Lithium Ion 7S pack. Now originally I was going to make a blue one and a green one because that will go better perhaps with the boards I have for my different packs but actually now looking at this I think I'll make two of the latest model down here at the bottom because it's a little bit smaller as you can see the silk screen has been slightly updated uh, to make things a bit more obvious there's also a pin one marker here on the opto coupler uh, which was forgotten on the previous version um, yeah so I think I will use uh, well create two of these green ones today uh, now today to solder those resistors the opto coupler and the IC I'm going to use some cheap solder paste and my hot air gun and uh, I'm going to use this for the first time and now this is a uh, well it's it's to help you dispense solder out of a syringe and the idea is that squeezes down there oh i've taken that seal off no there it goes that goes in there the top oh if i do that the top spins around and clips in ish uh, and then you can use this here to dispense the solder and i guess a 16th or an eighth of a turn delivers a little globule of solder i'll need something to dispense with and i use these conical tips i can't remember how big that hole is but this one seems to work reasonably well for me that goes in there it's a lure lock conical tip and then yeah i just need to start squirting solder onto the right places on these pcbs well, I've done the first one. Should we call that a rehearsal? And this can be the real take. Um, the first one didn't go brilliantly, I'd suggest. I don't know whether that is this uh, solder paste, which could well be past its best. I mean... yeah yeah the uh the screw thing is definitely easier than trying to use a plunger but it is still very fine movements you need to make on the screw to regulate the solder coming out uh, well if i told you that was better than the first attempt would you believe me Right, so the lowest component first, the resistors, uh, R1 is uh, 470 ohm, oh, gone too far, there we go. These uh, resistor books are really useful for this sort of thing, so I'll need two of those. I'm building two of these boards, and R1 is the current limiting resistor for the LED uh, I've just put on R2, which is a 4K7 pull down for the serial communication, and R4 and 5, which again are 4K7s, and they are pull ups for the I squared C comms. So uh, R3, is that 220, I think? Is a 220 ohm current limiting resistor for the Opto Isolator LED. Uh, a couple of these opto isolators. Oh, just two, please. Try and get the other ones back in the packet. Bah. And there is a little pin one marker on this case. It's a little dimple on the case of this opto isolator. 
And this last IC, what is 16 pins, I think. Got a clear pin one marker on it as well. Hopefully my pasting's been good enough. That's about right. That one's got a little bent leg. That's better. Back in place now. I turn over. Right. Okay, time for some hot air. Right, so I've got my hot air gun, which is always a challenge to get in on the uh, under the camera. But uh, I'm going almost vertically down on top of these components uh, with the lowest airspeed I can muster. And what we set at, 234 degrees. Um, I find that sufficient and uh, by using the lowest airspeed well my components don't go flying around on my pcb so yeah let's heat these up the resistors are starting to flow i'm going to try and keep moving the nozzle as well so that i don't heat up one area of the board too much uh, the Opto Isolator. I've used this little jig just to uh, hold the PCB off my bench, otherwise I get some scorch marks. The Opto has flowed. And now the most difficult one. The, uh, what is it? It's a PCF 657AT, is it? I can't remember. It's this I squared C um, IO expander, and it looks like that's flowed in place reasonably well. Just give it a little bit longer, make sure everything has flowed, and I think that's done. There we are then, ready for the Wemos, and I'm going to use one of these cheap clones from eBay and Ali, those sorts of places, and uh, these clones are very cheap indeed, and they usually come with all the uh, pin headers you might need. Now I'm just trying to work out whether I want to mount that Wemos directly on that board, but if I have an issue with this Wemos, then that's going to be a pig to get off or whether I use the pin headers, and uh, but then it's going to be proud of the board. Hmm. How close can I get it as well? Because there's resistors under here, and obviously there's the uh, CH340 on the bottom. No, I think I'll use these pin headers, and we'll have it proud from the board, and easy to swap if I ever need to. There we have it then, two completed DIY BMS version 4 controllers. Now they just need some software on them. Now to put the code on the WeWash D1 Mini, I've come to DIY BMS V4 code repository and I'm just going to download the whole zip. Once I've downloaded that zip, I've extracted that to a folder in my downloads folder in this case. And in Visual Studio Code and in Platform I.O., this is how we left it last time with the AT Tiny Cell module. Uh, but I'm just going to open project and find that folder. So it's here in this folder and we need the ESP controller and uh, let's just expand that window a little bit. That should allow me to open the ESP controller. So there we are. That's going to load all the files here on the left hand side and I just need to go to the platform io.es. Inny. Now I've got my Wemos plugged in and uh, it's coming up as COM4 so I'm going to change that parameter there. It should download all these library definitions here automatically. I shouldn't need to do anything. All I need to do is press the tick button to build the software. Now there we are, that has succeeded, 90 seconds that took, um, so excellent, I can just upload that now by pressing this little right arrow. 
And there we have it. Now, this should be uh, broadcasting an SSID. Now, I just need to connect my laptop to that wireless network. And now I'm connected. I should just be able to go to 192.168.4.1. And yes, it's now asking me to find my Wi-Fi network and put in... And uh, click Submit. And that should be it. Now, I have had a couple of issues here. It seems that the Wemos D1 Mini does not want to save my Wi-Fi credentials. And that's because I'm using the Wemos D1 Mini, not the Wemos D1 Pro, which Stuart actually recommends. It will work on the Wemos D1 Mini, but I need to change this line in platform I.O. So where's that line? It's just there. I need to change these build flags. So if I re-upload this now, that process should work without any issue. Now what's the betting Stuart was shouting at his screen saying, that's not going to work on the D1 Mini. Anyway, uh, with that D1 Mini programmed and connected to my Wi-Fi, I now need to connect it to some of my modules. And I'll need to knock up some communication cables. And I'm not entirely sure which way I'll need to wire them because I have some of these JST uh, wires here and uh, well they transmit from here needs to go to the receive on this one and I'm not entirely sure which way round is it red to red or black to black or red to black I don't know so I'm just going to give it a go I'll make some up I'll only do it temporary and then if I need to swap them over, it won't be too difficult. So here we have my test setup, which is very temporary, as you can see. So the transmit connection goes through to the receive of the first module. The transmit of the first module goes through to the receive of the second module. And the transmit from the second module goes back to the controller. So it's all a big loop. Now I just need some cells to actually monitor and I need to find some power for my controller. Now these are the cells that I intend to uh, plug into these uh, cell modules. Uh, these are 280 milliamp hours. They're AAA sized LIFEPO 4 cells. So uh, yeah, don't, uh, 10 440 size. Yeah, so don't be putting these in your usual triple A uh, appliances, because of course these pump out three, three and a half volts, not one and a half volts like usual triple A's. And I've made up a couple of fly leads here, again on the JST PH 2.0 connections uh, with washers on the end. And I'll use these and some neodymium magnets uh, to hold them on. So this is just a temporary setup to uh, check that the uh, controller and the modules can actually read the voltage on these two cells. And if they can, well, I'll be happy. Right, I think that's all wired up. The only thing I've got left to do now is plug in the Wemos. Let's power that up. That's just flashing away a little bit. I think we can see that. Give it a second or two to connect to my Wi-Fi and I think it's going to come up with this IP address it did earlier. Let's see what happens. Yes, look at that. Oh, oh and I've got voltages. I've got graphs. That's very exciting. 3.27 volts for the first cell. 3.257 volts for the second cell. I've got a range between the two of them of 13 millivolts. The overall voltage is 6.53. It's sending and receiving packets. It works. Oh, well, I'm made up. So I've jumped into the iPad a little bit closer. You can see that the uh, controller's still on in the background. It's showing this graph of my two cells at the moment. Uh, let's have a look through the menu system modules. Um, what's going to happen here? It appears uh, you can have different banks in this uh, particular model. But these are my cells, the minimum and maximum voltage, the internal temperature might be a bit high. It is quite warm in here though, to be fair. Um, lots of settings in here that I'm not entirely sure uh, what I'm doing with yet. MQTT, I'm very excited about MQQ, MQTT uh, settings. This is where you can actually uh, 
set well different banks for one um, you can set the right time with NTP and also um, you can set what the relays do now it probably isn't rendering perfectly on my iPad but as you can see there's an awful lot more you can do in here than you could in version 3 of the DIY BMS and Stuart has produced a video on how to set this up with your relays so I will link to his video up here somewhere yeah so I'm really impressed the about page just giving you some safety advice and a link to Stuart's uh, GitHub, so and of course his YouTube videos. Well, I'm really pleased with the progress I've made so far today, and I think I will call it a day here. I've managed to build the controller board, flash the firmware, connect it all together and confirm which way my wires should be uh, connected, and uh, seen the voltages of a couple of cells on my iPad. That's excellent. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.